My name is Judy Kitely, and I'm a writer, a teacher, and an active member of the Bayfield Historical Society. The story of Admiral Bayfield scans over eight decades. Born in Kingston-upon-Hull in England in 1795, to John Wolsey and Eliza Petty, an old English family who at one time lived in Bayfield Hall in Norfolk. At the age of 10, Henry joined the Royal Navy and saw action in France and Spain. He's one of Canada's great unsung, unknown heroes. Uh, start, he joined the um, British Admiralty about uh, age 10. He was wounded in Gibraltar, and at the age of 14, he became a midshipsman. His war service ended when he was transferred to Kingston, Upper Canada, where he was recruited by Captain William Fitzwilliam Owen, senior officer on the Naval Surveying Team. Bayfield spent the following year aboard the HMS Star, assisting in the surveying of Lake Ontario. At the age of 22, Bayfield was made a captain and was placed in charge of the surveying team of Lake Huron and Lake Erie. Owen was recalled abruptly to England, leaving Bayfield solely in charge of the team. At the age of 21, uh, became the official surveyor of uh, all of the waters of uh, North America for the British Admiralty. Uh, he, with an assistant, uh, surveyed the Great Lakes, uh, Lake Erie, Lake Huron, Lake Superior. Uh, he uh, did uh, uh, Saint Lake St. Clair, Lake uh, uh, the St. Lawrence River, uh, all around the Atlantic. So he He's responsible for saving thousands and thousands of lives because as, as, as the first surveyor in Canada, it was the first time that ships had any inkling of what they, were, uh, what they were in for when they came into Canadian waters. Back in London, after working tirelessly for two years, Bayfield succeeded in mapping out all the charts that he'd collected the data for. In recognition of all his hard work, he was promoted to commander at the age of 32. Back in uh, the early 1800s, uh, the Americans had a policy called uh, continentalism and they thought it was sort of their right to take over North America after the War of 1812. And uh, there was forts set up uh, and canals dug all over Canada to uh, set up a defense system. And this is what uh, Bayfield was doing in uh, the Great Lakes. The following 14 years, Bayfield spent surveying the St. Lawrence River, Lake St. Peter, Montreal and Quebec, the Saguenay River, the north coast of Gaspé, the Strait of Belle Isle, the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador and part of the coast of New Brunswick. Often the conditions for surveying were grueling. In his journal, Bayfield refers to giant mosquitoes and black flies as a huge curse. Often there was dense fog, which made visibility impossible. Once Bayfield and his assistant were marooned on a small island for five days. They survived by eating puffins, gulls and clams. In 1838, Bayfield married Fanny Amelia Wright, the daughter of a captain in the Royal Engineers, based in Quebec. Fanny was 24 and Bayfield was 42. She was an accomplished artist, having trained under the same tutelage as Queen Victoria. Later on, when they lived in Charlottetown, Fanny taught drawing and music. She produced a Canadian wildflower book which is found today in the National Library and Archives of Canada. They were to have four sons and two daughters together. In 1848, Bayfield had completed the surveying of the entire Nova Scotian coastline, with all its bays and river inlets, including Cape Breton and the Brass Door Lakes. 
His last major undertaking was to survey Halifax in 1852. Bayfield, now 57, decided to retire. Rheumatism had set in and he could no longer plot his charts as accurately as he desired. He retired from surveying and was promoted to Rear Admiral in 1856. In 1863, he became Vice Admiral and finally in 1867, he became a full Admiral. He died in 1885 at the age of 90. Fanny died six years later. So after spending six or seven years uh, surveying the Great Lakes, uh, when he went back to England to put all his charts to paper and, and formalize them, he met uh, a baron from uh, Holland by the name of Baron Van Tyle, and I guess socially they talked about the great investment opportunities in Canada, and uh, the recommendation of uh, Henry uh, Bayfield led uh, the little baron to uh, speculate on real estate in the Bayfield and Goderidge area. And because of Bayfield's recommendation, uh, the, the baron bought thousands of acres uh, between Bayfield and Goderidge in the hopes that someday they'd become great fortresses and that he'd be able to quickly flip the land to the government and make a, a huge fortune. Uh, Unfortunately for him, uh, Canadian development was a lot slower than he anticipated, and uh, the story of Bayfield and the great boom and bust in real estate uh, is, a, is a, another interesting tale. Bayfield uh, the Village is named after Bayfield, but you know, all over North America, Eastern North America, there are places with uh, his name. Bayfield, Wisconsin, Bayfield, uh, Nova Scotia, Bayfield Inlet, and that's a sort of a testament to his uh, his uh, fame and uh, and what he did for for this country. Several boats have also been named after Bayfield, and his name will live on forever.